I've always had a vague interest in family history, especially when I learned some years ago that one of my distant artistic German relatives was actually born in Islington in 1827, which is where I coincidentally lived when I left home and moved to London around 1983. Every so often I delve into the family archive and do a little bit of research. And I remember many years ago my father telling me how the Norris family married into the Smeaton family in the 19th century. The Smeaton family were a well-known family of engineers and in fact John Smeaton, born in 1724, is considered the father of engineering. There are memorials to him all over the place. The Smeaton name is particularly synonymous with the famous Ediston Lighthouse. And I remember my father telling me that the Norris family was somehow connected to this structure. With that thought in mind, I recently put the names Norris and Smeaton into search, and I came up with this page. Then my ancestor, Henry Norris, has his own entry. He was an engineer for various lighthouses around the coast of England and Wales, including the Soto Lighthouse in 1869-71, near Newcastle. It was the first lighthouse specifically designed to be powered by electricity. Prior to this, in 1841, he directed the complete renovation of the Ediston Lighthouse and repairs to Smeaton's Tower. And is it a mere coincidence that one of my favourite novels is the novel by Virginia Woolf called To the Lighthouse? But one detail in Henry's entry that really caught my attention was that his grave had been located some ten years ago in East London, in Poplar, where he lived. It was found by chance when some volunteers clearing a local cemetery uncovered the last resting place of a certain John Buckley, who was a recipient of the Victoria Cross in 1857. In clearing John Buckley's grave and erecting a new monument to him, Henry Norris's final resting place was also found within a few metres. These two men lived in the same area of London and within a couple of years they were exact contemporaries with each other. So I decided to, I must go to England, to London, to find where Henry is buried. The internet sometimes throws up rather bizarre things and I went further down the rabbit hole and I found this entry. Mark Smeaton and Sir Henry Norris were two of the four names implicated in the downfall and execution of Anne Boleyn. It seems somewhat strange that these two names should once again be linked together, albeit 300 years earlier. Another coincidence? And that Mark Smeaton was a court musician to King Henry VIII, a singer and a lutenist. This needs investigating further, but first I need to find Henry the Engineer. We've come to Tower Hamlet Cemetery Park for a very particular reason, and I want to find the grave of an ancestor called Henry, Henry Norris, who was an engineer and who worked with the Smeaton family on the construction of lighthouses. Now, Henry's grave was only discovered 10 years ago when there were volunteers clearing parts of the park here. And he is buried near to a man called John Buckley, who was awarded the Victoria Cross. And what we need to do is to locate where John Buckley is. And I've got the what three word location to find roughly where he is. And once we found John Buckley, then we will look for Henry, Henry Norris, who is very nearby. So we're going to wander around. I should get out my phone and we'll track the location of, of John Buckley to start with. So according to my phone, he's 223 meters away and we've got a compass to orientate ourselves in the right direction. So we will amble in that direction and try and find the grave of John Buckley and then that of Henry Norris. Still the right direction? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
How many more meters? 62. 62, we must be getting close. Gosh, it's easy to see how so many graves are just forgotten. 34 meters, okay. John Buckley had a, a new stone erected. So you should be able to, should be able to, to see that. that. Yeah. So we go right here. Okay, I've got a screenshot of what it looks like. So let me... It, it is adjacent to a tree. So if we can find a whitish looking stone near a tree, and then we're on to it. Going right again. Did we come up here? Well, it's proving a lot harder than we could have imagined. We found the location through the GPS, but uh, it, the, the area that is occupied by that GPS location is about three meters square. And uh, it's still not very, it's still a bit vague, so we're just kind of wandering around aimlessly trying to find any gravestone that we can read the inscription and see if we recognize either of the names. But the John Buckley one is a bit surprising because it's a relatively new stone. And yet we haven't come across anything which could vaguely look like a new military stone. <laughs> Still wandering around looking looking for John Buckley. From the screenshot I've got we can see a few little details behind like the corner of an obelisk and his grave where the new stone is has been edged with gravel but we can't we've walked around a lot of the paths here but we've seen nothing which resembles anything like that. There's some obelisks here but this one is on its own next to a tree but still nothing yet but we'll keep looking Pretty much all of these graves are dated in the 20th century, whereas John died in, I think, 1863. So it seems a bit out of place to have him here. No, nothing that resembles John's plot. curious we've been wandering around about an hour and a half now without any luck we've looked at the uh, what three words and apparently we've arrived but we've looked around and we can't see anything resembling the scene from the picture that I've got of a large tree and then just behind it is an obelisk within this particular location and there is an accuracy of eight meters around there's nothing that resembles what we're looking for. So I think we might have to call it a day for today and try and do a bit more research and get a better, more exact location for John. And once we found John, John Buckley, I'll be able to find Henry. But for now, We'll call it a day, I think. We've come back to Mile End. I had an interesting conversation with a man called Keith, who is a trustee of the Victory Cross Society, and he was able to furnish us with further details 
of the location of John Buckley. Now what's actually been interesting in these few days of doing this research and thinking about John and thinking about Henry is that we were using John ostensibly to get to Henry. But the more we find out about, about John Buckley, the more interesting his life is. So judging by the map that uh, Keith sent us, where do you estimate we need to go? I think just about here, maybe. Where that number 19, 19 is? 19 is, yeah, yeah. Good possibility, yeah. And how did we miss that last time? We went all the way, <laughs> all the way around here. We just haven't covered this area at all. So. Yes. Because that what three word location centres somewhere here? It was pretty much down here. And they're all area. 20th century? Yeah. yeah. Graves, yeah. All right, so, so we should wander second, in. Second time, lucky. <laughs> um, John and Henry, they were contemporaries, living in the same area, and they died within two years of each other. So I think we're hoping, I think we're heading in the right direction. Sid has gone up ahead to scout the terrain, and uh, today I hope we'll be lucky. <laughs> So it's not up this path. We will head further down and see if we can find him. The stones here are much bigger than the original location of where we were looking, which is encouraging. We think it must be down this, this path. I think I see it. I see it. There he is. There he is, John Buckley. So we'll take some pictures and send them to Keith for the yep. coordinates. Let me take some of them my location. So now we found John paid our respects. We're going to look for Henry and he's said to be within a few meters of John and his grave was discovered when they were clearing, clearing around here. So although it was a few years ago, we look for some cleared patches and uh, investigate. Well, it seems despite our efforts, we cannot locate Henry. But uh, there must be an organization here where we can go and check the records. The plot must be listed somewhere, as it was noted on, on Wikipedia. A bit more research. But for now, it's been very pleasant to wander around. And I'm really thrilled to have found John's John Buckley, his gravesite.